Time for Halloween again. Now this time, I'm giving myself a break, and I'm going back to one of my favorite video game franchises, Castlevania. It never stops. The same way Dracula keeps getting resurrected, I keep finding these games just creeping into my subconscious. The same way the Belmont family has to keep putting evil back in its place, I'm cursed to keep doing game reviews and constantly mentioning Castlevania. Say from the Castlevania, it kind of reminds me of a Castlevania. Castlevania. Castlevania? It's like in Castlevania. The Castlevania. Castlevania. So once again, it's like Castlevania. I talk about it all the fucking time. So, what the hell, let me just get it all out. This is going to be a big-ass Castlevania marathon with my own perspective. This is Castlevania, how I remember it. It's the Nintendo age. I'm sitting on my ass playing Super Mario Brothers when my cousin comes over and says, you want to play Castlevania? Instantly, it triggered images of Dracula in my mind and of all the frightening horrors that lurk in the dark. We popped that evil son of a bitch in the Nintendo and BAM! What can you say? It's side-scrolling 2D action at its finest. Now keep in mind, NES was in its early years, so I was still getting used to games that consisted of more than one screen. When I got to the giant bat, I thought it was Dracula, but nope, just the first level boss, I still had a whole game ahead of me. Not only is it a culmination of our classic gaming sensibilities, but of all the horror cliches, we have mummies, hunchbacks, and the Frankenstein monster straight out of the Universal movies. It also reminds me of the Hammer horror films with all its gothic scenery, and it draws from Greek mythology too, like the Medusa. Even the Grim Reaper makes an appearance. Death himself takes orders from Dracula. This game is simply a masterpiece. I love it. Well, I never said it would be easy. I am prepared to talk about the more frustrating aspects of the game, but first I want to discuss the more quirky moments, just those funny fantasy video game elements that are usually taken for granted. One thing I never understood after you defeat a boss, an orb comes down and you have to touch it. What's the point? Couldn't the next level just start right away? Why do I have to touch an orb? And besides, what the fuck is an orb anyway? Just a glowing ball? Another thing I want to know is who is the architect for this castle? All these blocks and staircases have no rhyme or reason. How about all these candles? They're everywhere. But the Simon Belmont, that's common. You see a candle, you whip it, and hearts come out. If I were to whip a fucking candle, would hearts come out? I'd like to know. Oh shit! In most games, hearts replenish your health. But in Castlevania, they're basically ammunition for whatever weapon you're holding. In the second game, the hearts are currency. So in a nutshell, the hearts in Castlevania games are anything but health. The only thing that replenishes your health are food that Simon conveniently finds in the walls. I always thought it was a roasted turkey or a carved ham right out of a Tom and Jerry cartoon. However, the instruction manual says that it's a pork chop. Okay, well that's a pretty big pork chop. Who cooked it anyway and hid it in the fucking wall? And if you were Simon Belmont, would you eat an old pork chop that you found in a wall? It must be fucking dirty. I do have to say, that would be convenient. If all I had to do was just whip the wall when I was hungry... Yeah, this wall would break it. There's a fucking pork chop in this wall, I would so eat it! Now let's talk about the difficulty. I don't think anyone would deny this is one of the hardest games ever made. And it's all because of one simple problem. When Simon gets hit, he jumps back. You could have full health, but just because there's a pit behind you, you're dead. It's a severe handicap that fucks up the entire game and the rest of the series. Then, there's certain enemies that just piss the shit out of me. 
There's hunchbacks which jump all over the place. I used to think they were monkeys. And then, of course, there's those enemies that just fly across the screen. Like the Medusa heads. And the bats. The hardest part in the entire game, besides Dracula, is the hall right before the Grim Reaper. You have Medusa heads coming at you from both directions, and two knights throwing axes at two different altitudes. I mean, look at the pattern going on here. Anything that hits you drains a quarter of your health, so that means four hits and you're dead. Oh, but the knights, the knights take nine hits. Nine fucking hits. You can't even concentrate on attacking them because you're too busy dodging Medusas. But you can't dodge the Medusas because you're too busy dodging dodging the axes, but you can't dodge the axes because you're trying to hit the knight, but you can't hit the knight because the game's driving you fucking crazy! It's like a test. It's a test to the shit. When you get to Dracula, don't even bother fighting him until you stock up on hearts. Go back down the steps, come back up, and all the candles are back. Rinse and repeat. This is extremely tedious, and nobody feels like doing it, but if you want to stand any chance against Dracula, you're gonna have to. Dracula may not seem so bad at first, especially after you send his fucking head to the moon, but then... Oh my god. What in the unholy name of ass is this fuckness? Oh wait, that's not a word? Well, it should be. So you fight the evil cookie monster, your health is never replenished, so this whole thing is like an endurance round. If you took one single hit on Dracula, I say your chances against the cookie monster are up a rat's ass. It took me 20 years, but I finally got this game beat. Ugh, your mother! And you still gotta get the orb? Oh, you're gonna replenish my health right after I beat the game? Thank you so much. Dracula's castle crumbles, and then come the credits. Hmm, Trans Fisher? It reminds me of Terence Fisher, the director of many of the Hammer Horror films. That's a funny coincidence. Oh, wait. Bram Stoker? Like Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula? Well, Christopher B? Is it a joke? I don't get it. Are they saying Christopher Lee is like a B? No, it can't mean that. This is probably just a series of strangely coincidental typos. Bello Lugosi, Boris Karloffis, they're just fucking around. Love Cheney Jr., Mick Shreks, Green Stranger? Is this supposed to be funny? Like, just to take a celebrity's name and change it around? That's like if I took the name Steven Spielberg and called him Steven Gielberg. Like, that's not funny. That's kindergarten level. No, kindergarten students don't find that funny. Aliens don't find that funny. Well, anyway, that's Castlevania for you. Good game, but holy fuck is it hard. Now, as promised, we're going to plow through the rest of them. All the old school Castlevania games. The ones that I grew up with. Not that one. Next on our list is Castlevania 3, which in many ways is the true follow-up. No, I already reviewed that game. So anyway... No. Stop. Stop. Stop! 